Hello and welcome. My name is Adriana Lee and I am a yoga teacher. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get out of sciatica pain. My mother has suffered from sciatica for as long as I can remember. And so it became really important to me to learn about what sciatica is and more importantly, how to get out of pain. And so in this video, I'll teach you how to use yoga poses to get out of sciatic nerve pain. So for starters, what is sciatica? Well, sciatica refers to any type of sciatic nerve injury. The sciatic nerve is the longest and largest nerve in the body, starting from the lower back, and it runs down the back of the legs all the way down into the feet. So, and there's two types of injuries here. There's either a muscle-related or a bone-related injury. In a muscle-related injury, we're referring to the piriformis muscle. Typically, it's really tight. Um, and the sciatic nerve either passes directly through the muscle, just above it or just below it, depending on your body. So if this muscle is tight, it can irritate the nerve and send shooting pains down the leg or um, any other sensations, burning, tingling. There's quite a range of possible sensations associated with sciatic nerve pain, and none of them are good. <laughs> um, and then the other type is bone-related. A bone-related injury is referring to a herniated disc or a bulging disc or spinal stenosis. Now, depending on which disc is affected, you'll feel this injury in a different part of the nerve. So in bone-related, we're going to be focusing on decompressing the lower spine since compression of the sciatic nerve or compression of the disc tends to be what causes that pain. So we'll focus on tucking the tailbone strongly in every single posture and lifting the ribs, trying to lengthen the spine. In the muscle-related injury, we're going to be focusing on the right ways to stretch the piriformis muscle and what else you can do to get out of pain. Now in either of these two injuries, muscle or bone, it's gonna be really important for you to remember to strengthen your core. So do your core work, do your crunches, whatever it is that you do to strengthen your abdominals because if the abdominals are weak, then the hips and the lumbar spine, the lower back muscles are gonna take over. For these next set of poses, the one prop that you will need is a yoga block. So go ahead and get your block, get your mat all set up, and then let's get started. So the first set of poses that we're going to be working on are bone related. So again, the important thing here is to feel for tucking the tailbone strongly to lengthen out the low back and at the same time lift up the ribs. Have that action in every single posture. At the same time, draw the lower abdominals in. This will help you to tuck that tailbone to strengthen your core so that your lower back muscles don't have to take over from your weak abdominals. So we'll begin by lying down, setting up baby cobra. So baby cobra is pretty similar to a traditional cobra, but the hands are going to be a little bit farther away. So first and foremost, we want to take a moment to reset the legs. So you lift up one leg at a time and internally rotate, bringing the toes in and the heels out. This is to create some space in the sacrum. From here, slide your hands about six inches away from the shoulders, so they're a little bit forward from a traditional cobra. Now work that strong tuck of the tailbone, draw the lower abdominals in, and as you inhale, use your fingertips to drag, reach the rib cage forward. As you exhale, use your fingertips, pull yourself forward and down. We'll do that two more times. Keep tucking the tailbone, draw the low belly in, inhale, reach the heart forward and up. Exhale, pull the heart forward and down. And one last time, tuck the tailbone, inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Now we're gonna lift up one last time, this time hold it. Find that strong tuck of the tailbone, engage your inner thighs, squeeze your sit bones in towards the tailbone. And then inhale, reach the rib cage forward and up. Pause here. Use your fingertips to traction, reach the ribs forward, while at the same time tucking the tailbone under. Deep breath in, exhale, keep reaching the ribs forward. One more inhale, exhale, drag the ribs forward, come all the way down, stack your palms, rest your forehead on top of the backs of your hands. So the next pose that we're moving into now is cobra with a block. So now you'll take your block and place it between your thighs. 
This is basically to remind you to keep tucking the tailbone, keep squeezing everything in. I want you to come down for a second and now bring your hands to your sit bones. There are these two little bony protrusions just right below your butt cheeks. <laughs> so find that and now squeeze your sit bones in towards the tailbone. You're gonna feel the tailbone tuck and then feel for just squeezing everything in towards the midline. Bring the hands back into Cobra. Draw the lower belly in, tuck the tailbone. Inhale, lift the rib cage forward and up. Exhale, drag the rib cage forward and down. Keep the strong tuck, inhale, lift up. Exhale, reach the ribs forward, lower down. Keep tucking the tailbone. Inhale, lift the ribs forward and up. Exhale, drag the ribs forward and down. Good, re-engage that strong tuck. Draw the lower abdominals in. Squeeze the sit bones in towards your tailbone. This last one we're gonna hold. Inhale, lift up and hold. So your forearms are just barely off the mat. You're squeezing the elbows in towards your ribs. Keep tucking the tailbone, reach the heart forward. One more, inhale, exhale, release. Plant your palms, let your forehead rest on the backs of your hands and breathe deeply into your belly. Go ahead and remove your block. And then next up we have half locust. So for half locust, once again, go ahead and reset your legs, lift up one leg at a time, internally rotate, the toes go in, heels go out. Now squeeze your legs together like you have a mermaid tail. Squeeze the sit bones in towards the tailbone and tuck the tailbone down. So the legs are working really hard. Now from here, open the arms out into a T with the palms facing down. Your forehead can rest on the mat. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, draw navel to spine. Then on your inhale, press the tops of the feet down, lift up just your upper body. Deep breath in. Keep squeezing the sit bones together. Stay here for two more breaths. Your eye gaze is down to keep the spine long. One more inhale. Exhale, release down. Take your right ear to the mat. Take a breath, relax your glutes, relax your legs. And then next up we have full locust. So from here, bring your forehead back to the mat. Let the arms go long by your sides. This time we're lifting up the whole body. So keep engaging, squeeze the sit bones into the tailbone, tuck the tailbone under, draw your navel to spine. As you inhale, lift up the upper body. Exhale, lift up the legs. Now keep tucking the tailbone strong. Keep engaging inner thighs in towards the midline. Eye gaze stays down to elongate your spine. Inhale, find a little more lift. Exhale, roll the shoulders back. One last breath in. And exhale, release all the way down. This time take your left ear to the mat. And breathe into your belly. Relax the legs, relax your glutes. Slide the palms under your shoulders, press yourself up onto the knees, and then go ahead and sit down onto one hip and grab your block. So your next pose is bridge with a block. So go ahead and lie down on your backs, have the block handy, and we'll set up for bridge. So reach your fingertips down towards your heels. You wanna make sure you can either just barely touch or almost touch, making sure that the ankles are stacked below your knees. From here, before we go anywhere, tuck the, the tailbone under, lift the pubic bone up towards your face. Feel lengthening in the lower back. And then grab your block, press down into your feet, lift the hips up, and slide the block underneath your sacrum. And the block has three levels. So if your back is not very flexible, maybe the lower level, medium, or you can even choose the highest level. Just depends on how your body's feeling today. So allow your shoulders to relax. Tuck the tailbone under strong. Lift the pubic bone up towards your face. Engage your core. At the same time, keep a little space between the chin and the chest. Keep breathing. 
each inhale, expand the breath into all sides of the ribs, front of the ribs, sides of the ribs, back ribs. And with each exhale, tuck the tailbone under, lift the pubic bone up towards your face. Feel for curling the tailbone towards your knees, lengthening the back. Deep breath in. Exhale, tuck. Stay here for one more breath. Good. From here, press down through the heels. Lift up your hips. Remove your block and slowly lower down one vertebra at a time. Once your hips reach the mat, gently windshield wiper your knees back and forth just to reset the hips. And then roll over onto your side. Come all the way up to standing for your final pose. So we're finding a standing back bend with the block between your thighs. So place the block right between your thighs. If the hips are a little wider, you can always bring the block to medium. Just find what's comfortable for you. So again, we're working that same motion, tucking the tailbone under, lifting up the ribs. So feet are about hip width apart, squeeze onto your block, engage the inner legs and then squeeze your sit bones in towards the tailbone. Tuck the tailbone under, draw the low belly in, and place your hands at your lower back. From here, use your fingertips to keep encouraging that tuck of the tailbone. And then as you inhale, lift up the chest. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, send the hips forward. Inhale, heart rises up. You can even use the heels of your hands to sort of encourage the ribs to lift up. Exhale, tailbone tucks. Keep breathing here. With each inhale, the heart rises a little higher. With each exhale, the tailbone tucks. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Squeeze onto that block for dear life. One more breath. When you're ready to come up, keep supporting the low back. Take your time. Come all the way up to standing and release. All right, thank you guys so much. I hope that this helped with your bone-related injury. Next up, we're working with the muscle-related injury. So if you're dealing with a muscle-related injury, we'll start out in a star-shaped pigeon. So pigeon pose is an amazing stretch for the piriformis muscle, but it can actually hurt your sciatic nerve. So we do this in a little bit different way, and you can modify this in every single one of your vinyasa classes, your yin classes, and it will definitely help you avoid re-injuring the sciatic nerve. So come on down to hands and knees. From tabletop, we'll begin with your right knee. Slide your right shin to the top of the mat, and then start to extend back about halfway then rotate just a little bit so that you're resting a little bit on that right hip and the left knee can bend. Now options here if the hips are tight would be to place a block underneath the right hip just for a little bit of support. And usually if it's a muscle related injury, the piriformis muscle tends to be tight. So find your variation that feels good and then take an inhale, lift up the chest. As you exhale, you'll begin to forward fold rather than reaching straight forward, you're reaching your heart over your toes. This will get you a better stretch. Try to find as much comfort in this pose as possible. This pose is really effective for stretching the piriformis muscle. So we'll be here for about three to five breaths. You're welcome to hold it for longer. And again, anytime you're in a traditional vinyasa class or a yin class, always know that you can keep the back knee a little bit bent. Having that leg straight can actually re-aggravate the nerve. So stay here for just one more breath. And then when you're ready to come out, slowly walk yourself all the way back up. Tuck the back toes under, slide the back knee in, and take the right knee back into tabletop. And we'll do the other side. Slide the left shin to the front of the mat, taking the left knee behind the left wrist. And then begin to extend the right leg back. Send a little weight into that left hip and bend the right knee. Start to square your torso towards the toes. Maybe use a block underneath the left hip. Inhale to lift, and then as you exhale, begin to forward fold. Now here, I like to make little fists with my hands and let the forehead rest on top of the fists, or stack the forearms. Ideally, your head is not lifted just because it's not super comfortable on your neck. And again, we're here for about three to five breaths. 
And then when you're ready to come out, take your time, tuck the back toes under, slide the right knee in, and then bring the left knee back to meet right, coming back into tabletop. So the next pose that we're going into technically is Pilates, <laughs> but it's really effective for strengthening all the muscles around the piriformis as well as strengthening the piriformis muscle. Sometimes the muscle is tight, but it's also weak. So we want to get into both stretching and strengthening here. So in your tabletop position, draw the lower abdominals in, tuck the tailbone under, rooting the tailbone down towards your heels, and then flex your right foot and lift up the right knee out to the side. And lower it down, tap your knee, keep the abdominals engaged, keep tucking the tailbone under, lift the right knee out to the side. Inhale to lower, exhale lift. Continue with your breath. This pose is sometimes called fire hydrant, so I'm sure you can imagine why. <laughs> Keep the abdominals engaged. Take just one more time, and then release the right knee down. We'll do the other side. Flex your left foot, and then open the knee out to the left. And then release it down, tap your knee. Core is engaged, tuck the tailbone under, lift up, and lower. Exhale, lift, inhale, lower. And just three more times. Last two. Last one. Release all the way down and send the hips back, child's pose. Stretch out your back, stretch out the hips. And walk yourself up to seated. Your next pose is gonna be bridge over a block with a figure four variation. So again, have your block handy. And then lie down on your backs, setting up bridge pose. Your feet will rest hip width distance apart. You'll lie down on your back. And then reach your hands down towards your heels. You should be able to just barely tap the heels with your fingertips or at least almost touch them so that the knees are stacked right on top of your ankles. Tuck the tailbone under, lift the pubic bone towards your face, and then drive through the heels, lift up the hips, and place the block underneath your sacrum. The sacrum is a bony plate at the very base of the spine, so you want to find that spot so it's not on one of the vertebrae, it's not super uncomfortable. Now from here, keep the shoulders relaxed, keep tucking the tailbone, drawing the lower abdominals in, and extend the right leg up to the sky as you inhale, exhale, cross the ankle on top of the left thigh, finding a figure four shape. Now as you're here, you're not just hanging out in the pose. You are pressing through the left heel to keep the hips up. I know there's a block there, you don't necessarily have to, but we're working on strength as well as flexibility. And now feel for tractioning the right knee out, almost like you're creating space between the femur and the hip socket. And then at the same time, send the knee out to the side. Continue to tuck the tailbone, finding a little bit of a stretch in the piriformis, but at the same time, finding some decompression in the hip socket. Deep breath in. Exhale. Stay for one more breath on this side. On your inhale, reach the right leg up to the sky. And exhale, release it all the way down, coming back to meet the left. Readjust, tuck the tailbone, curl the pubic bone up towards your face, draw the low belly in, and then root down through the right heel, send the left leg up to the sky. Exhale, cross the ankle on top of the right thigh, finding your figure four shape. And again, find that action in this pose. Keep driving through the right heel, keep tucking the tailbone, curling the pubic bone towards your face, and then send the left thigh outward, again creating some space in the hip socket. Deep breath in, exhale, engage, press away. Deep breath in, exhale, tuck the tailbone, keep driving through that right heel. One last breath. And then inhale, extend the left leg up to the sky, and exhale, release it all the way down. Keep tucking the tailbone, press into your heels, lift the hips up, and slide the block out, 
release the hips down to the mat. You can take a moment here to gently windshield wiper the knees back and forth, resetting the hips, resetting the spine. And then roll all the way over onto your side. Press yourself up to a seat. So your next pose here is Agni Stambhasana or fire log pose. So I've found that the easiest way to line up the legs in this pose is by using the front edge of your mat. So we'll start out with your right shin all the way along the front edge of the mat and your right thigh lining up with the side edge. So you're creating this 90 degree angle and then flex the right foot. From here, have your block candy just in case. The left shin will stack right on top of the right shin. So you're finding this 90 degree angle shape in both legs. Now options here, this knee might be very lifted. So if that's the case, maybe slide a block or a pillow underneath the knee. And the other knee might also be super lifted. So you may want to place the block under the opposite knee instead. So just find what feels good for you. Take your time, get settled. Take a deep breath in, lift up the chest. And then as you exhale, maybe find a little lean forward. You're just looking to find a comfortable amount of sensation. So it shouldn't feel like your muscle is going to tear apart, <laughs> but it should feel like a stretch. As you inhale, keep lifting the heart. And as you exhale, maybe walk the fingertips one centimeter further forward. Notice if you're chasing the most intense amount of sensation possible and instead, because we're dealing with something like the sciatic nerve, instead of finding that most intense possible sensation, just find a manageable amount of sensation, keeping it gentle. And we'll hold the pose for a little while longer, about two more breaths. Another option here is to stay sitting upright and then find a little bit of a twist. You're here for one more breath. Walk the hands back in. Lean back into your palms, uncross the legs, and windshield wiper the knees back and forth. Let that go. And we'll do the other side. So now slide your left shin all the way up to the top edge of the mat. Left thigh all the way up to the side of the mat, creating that 90 degree shape and flex the left foot. Then the right shin stacks on top of the left. So again, you're creating this 90-90 shape. This pose is Agni Stambhasana, which means fire log pose, but sometimes it's called 90-90 because of that 90 degree shape. So again, use your block if you need, or a pillow, or maybe two blocks if you want one block under each knee. Then when you're ready, inhale, lift up the chest. Inhale, begin to lean forward. Go slow, take your time. Again, you're not looking for the most possible sensation. You're just looking to get a mild stretch. And then walk your hands back in. Bring the hands behind you, lean back, uncross the legs, and gently windshield wiper the knees back and forth. Your next pose is Gomukhasana or cow face pose. So you'll extend the leg straight out in front of you and begin by crossing your right knee on top of the left. Now for some of you, this will be plenty. You'll already feel that stretch in the outer hip and that's all you need. Um, one of the reasons that I like this pose for sciatica is because not only does it stretch out the hip, but it also works on internal rotation, which is the opposite of what the piriformis does. The piriformis is responsible for external rotation moving outward. Now, if this is okay, stay here. Otherwise, take the left heel outside of the right glute. And you can adjust as much as you need to. Feel your sit bones on the mat. Maybe widen the heels if necessary. And then take a deep breath in, lift up the heart. And as you exhale, begin to walk the fingertips forward. Now, if this is too intense, back out of it. If it's not too intense, you have the option to lean a little bit more forward. Maybe bring your forearms to the block. Maybe even let your head rest on a block. 
Just notice where your body feels, whatever it feels, and then breathe deeply into your belly. As you inhale, let the belly fully expand. And as you exhale, allow your weight to sink forward. So sometimes in this pose, we're pushing away, we're pushing the earth away. What I want you to do instead is to allow your body to release. Give your weight forward, allow yourself to rest. We're staying here for just one more breath. And then take your time, walk yourself back up to seated. Place the palms behind you, uncross the legs, and windshield wiper the knees back and forth. Then send the legs out in front. Now cross your left knee on top of the right. Again, maybe stay right here, that's perfect, or take the right heel outside of the left glute. Finding your Gomukhasana or cow face pose. Take a deep breath in, lift up the chest. And exhale, begin to fold forward. Let your shoulders relax, let your jaw relax, and breathe into your belly. And on your inhale, walk yourself back up to seated, and extend the legs all the way out. Gently bop out the knees, let that go. Our final pose for sciatica, for the piriformis muscle, is Ardha Matsyandrasana, or Half Lord of the Fishes. So we'll begin by crossing your right leg over the left. Now for some of us, we'll stay here. This is perfect, keeping the left leg straight. Um, if you do feel that you can go a little further, maybe take the left heel outside of the right glute. If you came here and then decided that's too much, extend the leg back out. Plant your right hand behind you. Use it like a second spine. And then as you inhale, extend the left, leg up to, left arm up to the sky. Exhale, hook the left elbow outside of the knee. Eye gaze goes over the right shoulder. Another option here is to take the hand to your thigh and feel for pulling the thigh in towards your chest to stay upright and then twist from here. Notice where this twist is coming from, if it's in the upper part of the spine or if it's all in your neck. I like to keep the chin right on top of the sternum so that I really feel that the twist is happening in my thoracic spine and not just in the neck. So this pose helps with sciatica because we're working on those adductor muscles, those internal rotation muscles. Deep breath in, exhale, little twist. And on your inhale, release the twist, extend the legs back out, and we'll do the other side. So now cross the left knee over the right, either leave the right leg where it is, or take the right heel outside of the left glute. Left hand plant behind you, bring it right to your sacrum. Use the left arm like a second spine. Inhale, right arm lifts up. And exhale, hook the elbow outside of the knee or hold on to your thigh. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, belly in as you twist. Keep pressing into the left big toe, keeping those adductor muscles engaged. One more, inhale. Exhale, twist. And on your inhale, release the twist, unwind. All right, so those were your six yoga poses for bone-related sciatica and six poses for muscle-related sciatica. I really, really hope that this helps, and I hope you get out of pain soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Namaste. And don't forget to subscribe to the Be Yogi channel. Click like if you like this video, and give us a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. All right, bye guys.